Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all of his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Why do you stare at us as though our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name himself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, and his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to
reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And this is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are ch God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord.
Got a couple more. Come on, come on, come on. That is super fast walking. <laughs> That's great. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you uh, so much for the gift of our children and that you would call us children of God. We bless you and we thank you for our gift of our status before you, our identity in your son, Jesus Christ, and help us to manifest that in our lives. May the ministry and preaching of your word be your word for the sake and glory of your son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. We are studying John's first letter, uh, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. Um, he's the same author of the Gospel of John and the book of Revelation. But there's this wonderful line in our passage for today that uh, I just acknowledged. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. What a wonderful um, image and metaphor and actually identity that we have in that we are like Jesus, sons and daughters of God, that we are called children of God. Uh, I said metaphor, but not, even, not just a metaphor, our reality. Um, one of the things that John is wanting to get a, across to us is this idea of assurance. He wants us to know that we know that we know that we are in fact those children. And so what are the, the marks of the children of God? I um, brought over my prayer book. If you want to open up your prayer book to page 298, I want to show you a line in here. This would have been good, uh, a good lesson for last Sunday when I, I uh, understand there was a million baptisms, which was really awesome. Love that. But on page 298, um, at the top of the page there, we read this line. Holy baptism is full initiation by water and the Holy Spirit into Christ's body, the church. The bond which God establishes in baptism is indissoluble. Now, that, that's a very profound statement and a couple of sentences there. But one of the things that it says is, is that in order to be a member of the church, you need to be baptized and baptism is full membership in the life of the church. Um, as Episcopalians have lived into this theology of baptism, we've actually um, uh, grown to see the importance of, of baptism um, as being all that is needed in order to take communion. Um, that there used to be a thinking that you had to be confirmed before you could take communion as a young child, and um, in, in our modern day practice, this line from our prayer book and our thinking about baptism and meditating on it has actually led us to see, no, if we mean what we say, that baptism is full membership into Christ's body, then why would we withhold uh, the other sacrament from um, our young people? And I, I actually um, am of that perspective that we ought to include our children and, and even from a young age, and I, I know some people say, well, they won't understand it. I said, but that's the way kids are. You know, they don't have adult understandings of anything, but they are watching you as parents and grandparents, and when they put out their hands, um, that's a childlike faith. And I'll, I'll tell you a little thing that I've learned over uh, ministry is that oftentimes kids have a better understanding of the faith than their parents, <laughs> which is really interesting. But one of, the, one of the questions that this brings up, though, is, is, um, is putting holy water on a person's head, uh, is that enough? I mean, is that, does that do it? Is it done in the doing? Um, if, if you have been baptized by water, does that also mean that by necessity you have been baptized by the Holy Spirit. Notice what it says. Holy baptism is full initiation by water and the Holy Spirit. Is it possible for somebody to have been water baptized and not spiritually baptized? Hmm. 
something deep to think about today. Um, well, just think about this. Say I wanted to save the entire city of Jacksonville, so I make a deal with the Jacksonville Fire Department that I could use one of their water trucks and bless the truck and hose down the city. Can you imagine? We could baptize them all and, uh, and save everybody. No, it's not merely about putting water on somebody, but there has to be this inward and spiritual grace, this inward and spiritual reality of, of the Holy Spirit. Our problem as human beings is we can't see that. It's like uh, the Grinch that stole Christmas. You remember the x-ray machine in that where they, could, they shoved it in front of the Grinch and they could see that his heart was three sizes too small. And then later on in, in the show, as he had his conversion experience and became a much nicer Grinch, they put the heart machine in front of him again, and it, and it grew. His heart grew. Well, we don't have a Grinch that stole Christmas uh, detector, heart detector. It'd be nice if we did to see spiritual growth and spiritual reality. So um, how do we perceive it? How do we perceive spiritual uh, maturity and growth and authenticity of the Christian life um, without being able to see the Holy Spirit. This is what John is wrestling with, actually, in his letter. Because there was a group of people in the church that John is writing to that were not behaving like Christians. They weren't behaving like Christians because they weren't thinking like Christians, for one thing. Their theology was off. And so they were believing heretical things, like they, they didn't believe that Jesus was the divine Son of God. And so that was not a Christian belief. They were engaged in unchristian practices. We don't know exactly what those unchristian practices were from the letter, but... Um, but John, John describes it as sinning, so it had something to do with sin. And they were also schismatic. They, there was a group of these people that had left the church, so that one time they were part of the church, and then they left the church. And John says they would not have left us if they were not of us, because if they were of us, they would not have left us. And so John is very concerned with what is an authentic Christian. How do we know that we know that we know that I am a child of God and that my fellow parishioners are children of God? And so he talks about the marks of the faith. And one of the marks of the faith that we're not talking about today, but I'll just give you at least three of them, but one of them is that you believe the truth, that no one can say Jesus is Son of God unless he was carried along by the Holy Spirit of God. In other words, um, the, the confession of right belief and right theology is actually a marker that somebody is filled with the Holy Spirit because they believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of the world. Um, another one that he will mention a little bit later on, and we'll talk about this another day, but the marker of love that when you see somebody manifesting love in their life, um, that's a marker that they um, have the Holy Spirit of God working in their hearts and bearing that kind of fruit. The one that we're talking about today is the marker of righteousness. Listen to the way John puts it. For, uh, chapter 2, verse 28, he says, Now little children, remain or abide in him, so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not draw back from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness has also been born of him. In other words, it should be a one-to-one -one in our thinking that if we know that Jesus is righteous and we are abiding with him and connected up and synced up with Jesus, then we too ought to manifest righteousness in our life. It just makes sense. And again, Mark is, or John is all, all concerned about assurance. He's saying, when Jesus comes back for his second coming, you will have confidence or you will have assurance and be able to stand before him with no shame whatsoever 
Why? Because you know that you know that you are a child of God. You know that everyone who practices righteousness has also been born of him. I love what Charles Spurgeon writes about this passage. He says, It is well if we always remember that practical godliness is the soul of godliness. That it's not talking religion, but walking religion that proves a man or a woman to be sincere. It is not having a religious tongue, but a religious heart. It is not a religious mouth, but a religious foot. In other words, if all we are is talk, well, that, as we say, is cheap. Um, we must not only talk the talk, but as what is, what's the next part of that? Walk the walk. We need to manifest in our lives what we confess with our lips. And so um, John is validating our identity and our status as children of God. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we would be called the children of God, and that is what we are. But um, you need to know that that, that uh, reality of us being children of God also needs to manifest in the way that we show that we carry the family likeness. One of the things about um, being validated as children of God is that actually unvalidates us when it comes to being cool in the world. Uh, there used to be an old Christian song that said, I'm not cool and I'm, I don't care. My God loves me anyway, something like that. Um, one of the pressures that John is recognizing is that the world will not recognize us. While God recognizes us as children of God, the reason the world does not know us is because it didn't know him. And here's, here's the rub, that it's that pressure from the world that makes us want to compromise in our thinking and in our beliefs and in our practices and in our character. One of the reasons why I really love studying people like Dietrich Bonhoeffer and Alexander Solzhenitsyn and William Wilberforce. Um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a, a priest that lived during the time of Nazi Germany and Alexander Solzhenitsyn during um, the Cold, Cold War time with, in Russia and the gulags and all of that. William Wilberforce during the time in England, he was a legislator that, that contended against the slave trade of that time. These are men who manifest in their lives Christian beliefs, character, and behavior. And the world did not recognize them. Why? Because the world was on the wrong track, colluding with the evil one and in its own corrupt powers. And there's something about our sin nature that wants to collude with those things as well. And so what John says is there must be some intentional change that is taking place in our life that will point to the, the fact and the reality that we indeed have been born again, that the Holy Spirit is operative and at work within us and alive within us. One way to think about this is three theological words. So we have the word justification, sanctification, and glorification. Justification is that status that God gives us when he says, you are my child. That is who you are. When he adopts us into the family and, and sets us free from the punishment and the condemnation of our sins, we are justified into Christ. Uh, one kind of uh, trite way of putting it, but I think it works, is justified, never sinned, and lived a perfect life. That's one of the ways that, that uh, we can understand that God gives us the freedom to fail and to be honest about our sin because when he looks at us, he doesn't look at us as somebody that is going to incur his judgment or his wrath, but as somebody who he has redeemed and called his precious child, his son and his daughter. You have been justified in Christ. But then there is this 
glorification that will take place at the end of the age, where uh, Jesus will one day reappear. And the way John puts it is this way. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is, and everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. So one day we will be glorified. We will be exactly like Jesus in the character of God manifesting in our lives. But in the meantime, we are in a process of purification, which is sanctification, where we are progressively being made in his likeness more and more holy day by day. I had a, a seminary professor named Steve Brown, who had a radio ministry, he's a really deep voice, and Steve Brown. Uh, but Steve would, Steve would often say, I'm, I'm better than I was, but God's not through with me yet. It's a great way to look at it. I need to be able to see in my life that I have been made better than I was. Steve would, used to say, I was a pastor for 20 years before I became a Christian. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, he was kind of a crazy guy. But, uh, you know, we need to be able to look back and see how the Lord has moved us along. Can you do that in your life? Can you see where God has moved you along? So, uh, the last thing that I'll, I'll uh, bring up from this is that everyone... You know, one of the things John says here is can make it sound like we have to be perfect. And I want to connect this to a passage from last week. Listen to the way John puts it in this passage from this week. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. Now, does that mean that in order to show forth the mark of authentic Christianity that we have to be perfect? Actually, no. And, and you, you have to read John in his entirety in order to see all of what he's saying. But last week, you'll remember that he says, if anyone says that he is perfect, he's a liar, and the truth is not in him. But, but we use the conviction of, of being convicted about our sin to actually move us towards the throne of grace and the atoning sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. I made a mistake uh, a couple of weeks ago. I'm not going to tell you what it was because it's embarrassing. Uh, but I, I made a mistake, and, um, and it was a mistake. It wasn't a sin, but I made a mistake. But then I sinned. Immediately, because of the embarrassment, I said, I didn't do it. And what is it about us that wants to deny things like that? There's something about it. We don't want to be, make somebody angry. We don't want people to think less of us. We, we don't want to be condemned. Uh, we don't want to be embarrassed. And so there's an impulse within the human heart to deny sin. And I actually said to another person, I didn't do it. And then I started to think about it. And I was like, you know, you did do it. And I thought through all the steps and the ways that I had made the mistake. And I had to go back to that person and confess to them and to the Lord. I did a little re repenting in that moment, too, that not only had I made a mistake, but I had compounded the mistake by sinning. I let pride and the lie become something that was not of my character. And and it's wonderful, the, the message of John, where he says, if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins. And he reminds us that we have that atoning sacrifice in Jesus, who is a perfect propitiation, not for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. Not for our sins only, but for all people. And this is the process of sanctification is, is a, 
a flying close to Jesus and abiding in him. In other words, getting close to the flame of his love and his holiness and his purity, his righteousness. And the closer we get to that, the more we see our own imperfections and impurities and our sin nature. And that gives us opportunities again and again and again to um, come before his throne of grace like we're about to do right here and find his help and his mercy in our time of need. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We acknowledge the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people follow form three in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church. We all grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, our diocesan standing committee, Scott and Chip, our assisting bishops, for Charlie, William, Billy, Douglas, Lila, Allison. Ben, and Carolyn, our clergy, and for our companion church in Itabo, Cuba, we pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. <coughs> we pray for Donna, our mayor, Ron, our governor, Joe, our president, and for the members of our armed forces at home and abroad. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. We give thanks for the marriage of Christina Michael Alexander and Benjamin Thomas Miller. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. We pray for healing in the lives of Heidi Cassidy, Sarah McCarty, Jackie Walker, have compassion on those who suffer any grief or trouble. We pray for those who have died. Give, give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your sins, who have, for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. And through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning and welcome. I, uh, first, if you're new to St. Mark's, if you've never uh, been here before and you're visiting for the first time, we're delighted that you're here. We hope that you receive a rich welcome in the life of our congregation. If you're looking for a new church home, we would love to be that for you. Um, also, welcome to those who are worshiping, worshiping with us online. We're glad that you're part of it as well. I, I want to introduce uh, Caitlin Knott who is going to be serving as our children's minister. And I want to give her an opportunity to uh, say a little bit about herself and maybe uh, share a little of your vision for the ministry. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, I just would like to start by saying I'm so excited to um, be here. And um, I'm blessed to know a lot of y'all's kids. Um, already. I'm over at the school now, so I've met a lot of them there, and everyone that I don't know, I cannot wait to meet, but um, at the end of the day, this is not about me, and my prayer throughout all of this is just that your kids would encounter the uh, Lord, so I'm excited to be here. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you, Caitlin. Really great to have you. Um, so tell me a little bit about your background, like where what, how'd you get into this and uh, teaching and mm -hmm. what's your, where'd, that, where'd that come from inside of you? Yes, so I'm currently in school to get my master's in uh, social work. So I've learned a lot about um, key uh, stages of the kids' lives and what, how they learn and all of that. But my passion is 100% for the kids. Um, I have a past in uh, foster uh, care, and um, <clears throat> then I started getting into teaching, and I love it. Every day at work, I get up, and I'm just so excited to see all the all the kids, and they mean a ton to me. And so I'm excited to be here at the church. What grade so, yeah. are you involved in over at St. Mark's? Are kindergarten kindergarten? Um, assistant, and then I'm also over in ELP. Uh, one as well. ELP so stands for er Le er early, yes. early Learning Program. The Babies. The Babies. Yes. Yeah. The babies, yes. All right. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being a part of our church. We're I'm really excited. excited. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I also want to remind that uh, following the service, we do have some Sunday school program for kids and also uh, some classes for adults. If you look in your insert in the bulletin, you can see those different offerings, and there's also ones that are um, going through the week, and it's not too late to join any of the, the courses. We, we especially have one for newcomers, and there's also uh, one that's being led by our, our newest retired clergy associate, Ben uh, Jones, and we're really excited to see how that goes. So walk in love as Christ loved us, as he gave himself up for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom all this we ask through your son jesus christ by him and with him and in him in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever Now, as the Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
gives to God, the people of God. Take them remembering that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah.